With only two races remaining in the regular season, our drivers returned to the track where it all began. Spiral Speedway was the site of the first ever NASMAR race, and now it will host one of the most pivotal races of the season, the Vortex 720. And with that, we welcome you to MSPN's coverage of NASMAR. I'm Rick O'Shea. Glad to have you here. Just two weeks now left in the regular season as we are ready for the four set of the Vortex 720. We'll begin with our qualifying and get the field set up for a pivotal race, the penultimate race of the regular season. And we'll have our qualifying lineup as always with the inversion of the previous race. So those are the results from the NASCAR Discord 400, which will continue on your screen there. Go all the way to where we see Streamer who will be last to qualify. And before we get ready, let's go ahead and send it down to John Ball. Take it away, John. Thanks, Rick. Yeah, we've talked a lot about teams trying to get all their drivers into the playoff field. And unlike Red Pandas Racing, Blade Star Motorsports doesn't have the luxury of wins the, so far this season. No cars from the team are officially locked in, but they're confident that Winks will get in on points this race. With that in mind, they've taken measures to attempt to improve Murakami's chances at winning one of the next two races, which is the only way he'd qualify for the playoff tournament. On the other side of things, OB Racing's star driver, Streamer, has won three races this season and has basically locked up the number one seed into the playoffs. They're now putting all their focus into Electro's number 93 machine as they try and get him into the playoffs. Should be interesting to see how these moves work out, Rick. Back to you. Thank you very much, John. And so we will start with Prime. You mentioned Winks and the Blade Star Motorsports crew. Winks is the highest running driver, plus 41 to the cut line. First, we'll start with Prime. Locked into the playoffs, but really struggling this year. And from that first run, sets the time at a 3.69. Prime won the last time we were here. And really, everything has gone downhill from there. As a serious just falling off from the uh, standpoint of the performance from Prime, but sets that time, as we said, at 3.69. Here's Nugget in the 11, and we'll see what they can do. Makes it through turns one and two across the line. Looked like a little slower, and it was a time of 3.93 on that first line there. Just kind of looked like didn't gain a whole lot of speed at the end of the course to try to gain momentum for Nugget, who is currently not in the playoffs, and here is Quillo. Quillo is in playoff position right now, but looks like he flipped. He did underneath that first portion of the course where it kind of goes away from the view, and let's see, it was in that first turn, and a bad start for Quillo, who will not finish the first lane and we'll now have to see what that time is later on. Depending on how everybody else does, that'll move us to Confetti. In the 17, finished 15th when we were here last time. And Confetti going to come across the line with a time of 391, just faster than Neptune. And we'll move into second of four. Of course, as we said, three have completed the course. Another very important race, and that continues on as we will see Jeff Marbin now in the 24th. It's been an incredibly disappointing season for Jeff Marbin, who is last in the points and really, really struggling. And Marbin will come across the line, finish it, but with the slowest time so far, and by a good margin, over two-tenths of a second slower than Neptune. It's a 4-1-5 for the 24 Dumarb machine. It's been just a struggle all season long for Jeff Marbin. That'll bring up Mozilla, who finished third. And had a couple of fastest laps. Last time we were here, that's not going to happen this time. Spins on the backstretch. And Mozilla will fail to get through this qualifying. That's the second out of the first six to go. We're going to have 40 runs, 20 from each lane, 
as Spitzer is up. We only had two DNFs the last time we were here, and we have two out of the first six that have failed to qualify. Let's see what Spitzer can do. Spitzer spins, turns around, and will not get through. Just short of the yellow line, the line to gain to finish it off, and Spitzer unable to finish. A shocking start here as three of seven unable to get through, and it's a very disappointing start for Quillo, Mozilla, and Spitzer. Meanwhile, Jeff Marvin loves what he's seeing as Jack Tato will come up. Jack Tato was the final car to get in. The last time we were here, qualified 18th. You can see all the markups on that machine. Been in some tough battles as Jack Tato gets across the line. This is the slowest time with a 4-3-6. That'll allow Marvin to continue to move up. Right now, Jeff Marvin's just in it for pride, and you can say that a lot of those at the bottom. Confetti is included in that group. Confetti is 21 points behind. Burakami is 47 points behind. And in need of a win, we mentioned how Bladestar Motorsports going to try to put all the effort into this four machine. Let's see what happens on this run. Look like a fast time. It is. It's the fastest so far, a 3-5. Well, for the moment, move Murakami into the lead and again... Being part of a big team has really paid off for some of these drivers like Winks, Bloodstorm, as Steve will come in now. And then, of course, all the teams uh, from the Red Pandas Racing booth. And Steve flips in the first turn. Won't get out. It's four that have failed to qualify now. Just 60% of the cars have finished so far. Ranging from a time of 3-5 to 4-3-6. And that'll bring up Winks, who finished 8th here. Averaging a 7.17 finish. Running overall 4, or excuse me, 3rd in the standings in points. And highest out of the people, uh, the cars yet to win a race. And that time will be the slowest. A 4-4-2 for Winks will move him into 7th for the moment. Again, still ahead of those four drivers who were unable to qualify on this lap, but certainly not the run Winks was wanting, trying to lock themselves in on points. That'll bring up Bloodstorm, who did not qualify when we raced here to start the season. Finished last. And will finish this lap. So that's already a plus for Bloodstorm in the time running uh, 393. Good enough to tie Neptune for fourth. And so you will go ahead and factor in Bloodstorm in fifth out of the 12 to go. And that'll bring up Nugget. Nugget has really struggled on the season, but had a good run here. Finished fourth. And we were here to start the year. Nugget going to try to gain the momentum, get across the line, and does. It'll be a slow time, the slowest so far to cross at a 4.78. But again, it'll still beat at least four cars who did not finish this lap. So that's a plus for the 16. Nugget, who is still in competition here, 13 points back, as that'll bring up Electro. We mentioned Electro. Going to get a lot more focus from OB Racing. They have fast cars. You've seen it all season long with the 26. Let's see what the 93 can put forward. Strong car comes across the line and will take the lead. And to the top of the boards goes... The 93 of Electro in the Texas Rollhouse car with a time of 3-4-4. Six hundredths better than Murakami. And into the lead, here is Lemon Drizel, who did not do well. Qualified fourth here to start the season, but ended up finishing 14th. Drizel is 40 points back of Streamer for the points lead in the regular season championship, but still second in the standings, and will come across the line here with a 4-0-2 time at seventh best. So middle of the pack for Lemon Drizel here from this first line. Which is the inside line, and we'll run the outside next. Here is Oak, who was the other car not to qualify when we played here, raced here, excuse me, in the season opener. But has really come on strong as of late in the playoffs right now. Plus five on that cut line, gets across the line, despite a little bit of a bobble at the bottom of the course. But that time for Oak, wow, how about that? Even with a little mistake from the 48, Oak to the top of the board, a 3-4-3. Three, three. 
Fastest time run so far. How about that? Very impressive. And that will bring up the two of Sal. And Sal's going to spin and go off the course. And will become our fifth driver not to qualify. Big contact there, as you'll see it on the replay. In real time, it looked like slow motion, and it's even more so when you actually put it in slow motion. Big hit there for Sal, unable to qualify. That'll bring us to Earl in the 33. And Earl's going to get across the line. A little shaky there. The time for Earl is a 3-6-3. Still a strong time. Fourth best. And that'll bring up our final two qualifiers, which are really the two that have dominated this later portion of this regular season. Here's Woodpecker. Got off to a terrible start, but has been really good since switching over some of that equipment from Lemon Grisel. And Woodpecker goes right into the course and stops and you can see right there made where i think the contact was made with the course wow let's have a look yeah just went almost sideways into the first turn hard contact slow it down again oh man nearly a flip from the 43 another dnf and we'll get 14 cars at the most that will finish this first lap here is streamer in the Pines Cones car, so a little bit different look there for the 26, always known, as we've mentioned, for those different paint schemes. Fastest car on the course almost every week. Let's see what happens here. Not going to be the fastest. Slowing down toward the end of the course, and the time is just a 4.18, which is just outside of Jeff Marvin's time. It'll be 11th fastest, but only three cars with a slower time that actually finish the lap. Wow, how about that first round of qualifying? Quillo, Mozilla, Spitzer, Steve, Sal, and Woodpecker all fail to finish. It's a top 10 first run for Jeff Marbin, and it's the top of the leaderboard for Oak. As we'll turn back around and go to Prime, this second lap for Prime slows down, almost came to a stop, but we'll still get across the line. That's a four, yeah, four, four, eight for an average time of 4.09 for Prime, so a significantly slower lap that time, and let's see what we get from Neptune here, that looked like a smoother lap for Neptune, and it was a 388, a little bit faster than the first lap, 391 average time, and first place right now for Neptune. Cutoff line is going to be here, we'll lock in our first car, it's not going to be Quillo because of the DNF. Let's see what Quillo can do here on this second lap. Got to put a good time forward because it's going to be competitive at the end. And it will lock in Neptune. That's a 4.06. The average time ends up being a 7.17. So it's an average of 5.62, the 7.17 from the DNFs. A 5.62 that'll lock in Neptune, who is in for the first time in three races after missing consecutive races. That comes to a close here. Here is Confetti with a time of 3.81. That's an average of 386, and to the top of the boards to lock themselves in and for the moment sit on the pole. Just to clarify what I was saying about the 717, that's the average time for the cars that did not qualify. One and a half times the slowest lap, so that is combined. And now Jeff Marvin in trouble. Marvin got to get across the line and does, but will not be locked in. That's a 496 for an average time of 456. Boy, got wild on that backstretch for Marvin. It will lock Prime into the show. Jeff Marbin really shouldn't have any problems as long as you finish those laps, you're in. As here is the 66 of Mozilla. Mozilla didn't finish the first lap. Will here. That's a slow time. It's a 493, making the average time a 605. That'll lock Jeff Marbin in and move Mozilla to the bottom of the leaderboard. Sixth out of the six to finish their qualifying runs. And that will move us to Spitzer. Either Spitzer or Quillo going to be locked in here. Let's see what happens on this lap from the 25. Looks like a pretty good time. Took a hard right at the end, but it's good enough to get by Quillo. A 388 time, an average of 553. And in to the Vortex 720 is the 25 of Spitzer, who was, of course, on the pole when we ran this race as the Spiral 360 way back when. 
and a little bit of trouble for Jack Tato. Gets across the line, though, and Jack Tato with an average of 4.58. That's the slowest time out of the five that have completed all of their laps, but it's good enough to get in. And you can see on the replay, just not a lot of speed there from Jack Tato, who has struggled for the most part this season. Only 11 points out, though. That's close at the cut line. Across the line, good, nice time for Murakami. It's a 3.69, an average of 3.60. And Murakami is at the top of the boards for the moment. Team Alliance is so important, and they are paying dividends again for a driver struggling. That's Murakami this time. Here's Steve, who did not finish, ran a good time there, and runs the best time out of the cars so far, who didn't finish their first lap. A 3.54 will put him in. It's still Quillo and Mozilla, who are the bottom two halfway through this second qualifying run. Sal and Woodpecker yet to go. Those are the two who didn't qualify from the first lap. Everybody else, if you finish your second lap, you're in. So that's the case right there with the 13 of Winks. Moving up to fifth ahead of Jeff Marvin. And by a pretty good margin, there's a large gap there in between prime and then two-tenths of a second back is Winks. And then nearly three-tenths of a second back from there is Jeff Marvin. Here's Bloodstorm in the 86. 393 first lap across the line and an Pretty good time, a 4.02 will average it out at 3.98, fourth fastest. And as you go further and further down, more and more drama for Mozilla, 31 points to the good. And for Quillo, 10 points above the playoff cut line right now, they need to make these races. As this is Nugget with a time of 3.93, an average of 4.36, seventh best. Right in between where Winks and Jeff Marvin are. Marvin with just a little bit of an advantage over Jack Tato. Here is the 93 of Electro. Ran the second fastest first lap. And on this second lap, Spins comes across backwards. Still look like a fast time. It's a 3.56. Make the average time a 3.5 flat. And the pole position for the moment belongs to the 93 of Electro. And once again, I will tell you how important team alliances are. Right now, the two struggling guys that have teams who can help them, they're at the top of the boards. Here's Lemon Drizel. This will be a slow lap. Looked like Lemon Drizel was trying to just take a nice stroll around the course. It's a 467, and Drizel will settle into eighth for the time being, just ahead of Nugget. With five drivers left, Oak, Earl, Streamer, Sal, and Woodpecker. Here is Oak, ran the fastest time. Could have a pole, let's see what happens. Didn't qualify the last time we were here. Oak runs a time of 3.78 that time, and will settle into third one one hundredth slower than Murakami. That is big right there. That is gonna make it very difficult for somebody to pass Electro for the pole. Here is Sal, didn't qualify. It's Sal and Quillo, who gets in? Let's find out, and I think the answer is going to be Sal. Look like a faster time. It is a 3.75 will lock Sal in, and Quillo still in trouble. In fact, Earl here is going to be in no matter what, as we'll see this lap. And it wasn't a very good one. Backwards and slow for Earl. Going to hurt some of the timing there and some of the seating. It's a 4.48 to make it a 409 average. Excuse me, a 410 average, and it was a 456 for Earl. Beg your pardon there. Here is Woodpecker, didn't finish. Looks like a fast time. Woodpecker does have it, spins at the end. Locked into the show, a 341. Mozilla is now officially out and will not qualify for this race after finishing third the last time at this track. If Streamer finishes the lap, they're in and Quillo's out. Let's see what happens. And Streamer not going to do it. Wait, hold on. Nope, that's it. Streamer is not going to qualify for this race. Unbelievable. Wow. The points leader, the championship favorite, the three-time winner will not be in the Vortex 720. Quillo gets in. And you see there, wow, a shocking finish. 
as it's jubilation and then also disappointment from OB Racing. Electro in the 93 takes the pole, but Streamer, the 26, fails to qualify. Quillo just barely gets in, thanks to the qualifying failure by Streamer. Failing to qualify, the 26 and the 66, who've had some pretty good times. Mozilla in good playoff position. As you see, the fastest laps. Three championship points to the pole position. Electro at a point for the fastest inside time. That was Oak. And at a point for the fastest outside time, that was Woodpecker, who also ran the fastest overall lap. As you look at the grouping, group one will be Electro, Winx, and Quillo. Group two is Murakami, Lemon Drizel, and Spitzer. Group three, Oak, Earl, and Sal. Group four is Confetti, Nugget, and Steve. That's a very interesting grouping right there. Group five is going to be Neptune, Jeff Marvin, and Woodpecker. And group six is Bloodstorm, Prime, and Jack Tato. The scene is set. Just two races left. We'll see if somebody locks themselves in with a win into the NASMAR playoffs. And so the field is set for the Vortex 720. We will see you for the race. But until then, I'm Rick O'Shea, and you've been watching MSPN's coverage of NASMAR.